The example I'm using in this video is a generative designed part that was supplied by the KOU Formula SAE racing team. After importing the STL file, you'll notice the mesh is not acceptable for FEA purposes. So how do we fix this? Traditionally, we would use the build mesh regions command, followed by mesh remesh regions. But today I'm going to introduce a powerful and easy to use tool called mesh on mesh. You'll notice in the model info pane that under geometry, nothing's listed. And the reason is these are just faceted surface representations that came in with our STL file. So the traditional way of meshing geometry has been grayed out. We can't mesh our surfaces. We don't have access to mesh bodies. So we'll use the new mesh on mesh command. It's asking for us to select elements. So I'll choose one and then I'll select add all connected elements. I'll highlight just to show that all the elements on the upright were selected. In the mesh on mesh dialog box, we have two options for mesh type. We can choose try or we can choose quads. I'm going to go with try for this first example, and I'm going to leave the target element size alone. And for now, I'm just going to go with the default. So I'm not going to change anything. So we'll click OK. And as a result, you can see that we've increased the fidelity of our mesh. And if we check the mesh quality, it looks really good. You'll remember in the dialog box, I just used the defaults, which have produced a really nice mesh. And probably if we were doing an analysis of just one component, this would be sufficient. So I'll undo. And this time, let's make our target mesh size a little larger. We're still going to use try elements. And the points around circle, I'm going to reduce this to six, and we'll see what the results look like. So as a result of changing the target size value and also the number around a circle, we were able to reduce it from 69,000 elements to only 15,000. So um, a really efficient model here. And the mesh, again, if we check the mesh quality, our elements look really nice. Another option with mesh on mesh is to use quad elements. So I'm going to select all the elements again, change it to quad. Let's use the same target size, reduce our points around circle to six, and see how this looks. And you'll see it converted those triangles to quad elements. We have some distorted elements. This geometry really doesn't serve well for using quad elements. Uh, however, I just wanted to show the example. Since the triangle elements were much better quality, I'm going to undo, go back to the triangle elements. And once you're satisfied with your mesh, from here you would go to Mesh Geometry Solid from Elements. Now since this is the only geometry in this file, I can just select all elements. Click OK. It's asking for a material. I'm not going to put a material, it'll just be plot only elements. And here you'll see now we can apply a tet mesh. So to summarize what just happened, we used mesh on mesh and it created a nice surface mesh for us. We are now sending the surface mesh to the body mesher to create the tet elements. So if we now look at our element types, you'll see that it created solid parabolic elements. So the next time you have surface geometry represented by faceted data only, try the new mesh on mesh command for refining, unrefining, or converting between tri and quad elements. It's easy to use and the latest meshing technology produces a high quality mesh in a shorter amount of time.